Hey, welcome to the channel where we DIY everything. Today I'm going to show you how I built this queen size Murphy bed and why if you downsize, something like this might fit the bill. Let me show you how it works. You're going to pull it down using the handles on the faux doors. Fold the leg, pull out some pillows, and voila, you're ready for your guests. This is the room we started off with, 10 foot by 11 foot. So not a super big room to have an office or a desk in there along with a bed. That's why we needed this flex space. So if family was in town, we have the bed. But when they're out of town, then we can use that office as intended. So let's get to work. Create a bed has all of the bill of materials you're going to need for this project. So I went and picked them up and then they have all your cut lists on there. I will start working through the cut list. Just make sure you pay attention because I didn't later on in the video and you'll see when I got a cut in a little bit of an awkward place. First up is the inner wood bed frame. You're making the frame struts here out of one by twos and you're just gluing and pinning them together. Once you get all the struts fastened together in that L shape, you're gonna take both your frame sides and you're gonna put them next to each other and use your framing square to mark strut placement on each of them at the same time. That way both your frame sides have identical strut placement, keeping everything square. To fasten the sides to the struts, you're going to use a countersink bit and you're going to drill a pilot hole through each leg of the L and utilize a two inch wood screw to fasten each side to each of the struts. And just like that, you got one component done, inner bed frame complete. Next up, create a bed gives you this template to round over your side rails so your guest doesn't come in and just nail their shin on it. So I highly recommend using it. Rip those pages out of the packet, cut them out, and use it as a guide for your jigsaw. Then this is where things start to get a little bit tricky. And when I say tricky, I mean you just need to pay attention to the instructions. They have all the measurements given for you, so just follow along. And make sure your side rails are mirroring each other and you're not creating two rights or two lefts. I didn't do that here, but I may or may not have done that later on. <laughs> the holes I'm drilling here are all the way through with a one inch forstner bit. That is for the pivot of the bed. If you want to prevent tear out, drill on a piece of scrap wood or drill almost all the way through and then flip it over and drill the rest of the way from the other side. Now we move down to the foot end of the side rails and this is drilling a 5 8 inch hole, half inch deep for the legs to sit in. Back up to the head end of the side rail. This is where you'll install the lower stud plate, which is essentially just where the hydraulic hooks to the bed to pull it back up. To help yourself out on this one, cut yourself a piece of 5 16 scrap to get your spacing right between the ball and the top of the side rail. And then you need a quarter inch overhang on the end and then utilize your framing square to keep that plate square on the actual side rail itself. So there's a couple things that go into that one. Um, but once you get it, you'll put three machine screws in that one and then two of the typical screws. Same thing when you're drilling those holes for the machine screws. Make sure you're drilling on top of a piece of scrap or you're going to blow out the wood on the other side and you're going to see it whenever you open up your bed. It's time to mount the female pivot into the side rails themselves. So for these, you're gonna use the silver screws. These are the number 12 screws. They're a little bit more heavy duty than those number eights. Now it's time to mount the foot rail, the head rail, and both the side rails onto the bed frame we made to start off. So you're gonna start with the foot rail and the head rail and then sandwich those in between the side rails. So you're gonna drill an inch and a quarter deep through the inner bed frame into the foot rail and into the head rail and then you're going to use a number eight screw and it's an inch and a quarter long to fasten them to the bed frame once the head and foot rail are on you're going to put on the side rails sandwiching the head and foot rails in between and you're going to drill the same thing number eights inch and a quarter through each of the in between each of the struts and then on the ends, fastening the side rails to the foot rail themselves, you're gonna use a two inch number eight screw. Before you go any further here, go ahead, take a second and put your edge banding on. Don't be like me. Lay your face panels good side down. Mark a quarter inch reveal on each side to lay your bed frame inside of. And then you're going to glue, which 
I'm not showing here and screw your bed frame to your face panels. I ended up having to pull those screws, glue it, and re-screw it down. So another thing, don't be like me. Next up was the verticals, and when it rains, it pours. I must have been having a bad day that day because I didn't cut these verticals down to length. That was the only cut I missed. And so they're a full eight foot right now. So I'm doing all these markings and I'm gonna end up having to move my bed stop down. But the three things that you need on these are the bed stop, the upper ball stud plate, which the other end of the hydraulic hooks to, and the male pivot plate. So I stopped counting at this point, but if you take a second and you look at both of my verticals, they don't mirror each other, they're identical. And I don't realize that, unfortunately, until I go to put it on the bed. All right, enough laughing at my mistakes for now. More of that to come. So next up is the bed header, which consists of the header board, front rail, two mounting cleats, and a rear rail. Tip here for this one, you need a half inch space between the bottom of your header board and the bottom of the rear and front rail. So I cut some half inch pieces and you can see them sitting on the table there just to set my header board on to get that space naturally. The front rail will get finished nail and glue, just make it easier finish work in the end. And then the rear rail will get glue and some two inch screws. The mounting cleats will get some glue and then some countersunk holes going through the top into the top of the header board with some two inch screws. Here's me fixing my first screw up, unscrewing the bed frame from the face, adding glue, and then re-screwing it back down. Next up, you'll throw your quarter inch panels on top of your bed frame, and then while you're at it, you might as well fasten your mattress straps. You'll just go 16 inches from the corner each way and screw those in. And here comes the realization of my next mistake. Yep, those panels are identical. They do not mirror each other. Don't worry, I still got one more mistake in the bag. But next up was the headboard, not to be confused with the header board that goes on top of the bed. And here comes my third and hopefully final mistake. Yep, that looks like an eight foot vertical in an eight foot room. All right, time to deal with it. So I cut off the back corners so I could get the verticals to stand up, broke out the track saw and lopped them both off. Good to go. Now that that's over with, good to hook up the hydraulics, crawl back up top and put the header board and screw through the mounting cleats on both sides into the verticals. Last but certainly not least, fasten this thing to the wall through that header board and make sure you're hitting studs. Go get you a stud finder if you don't have one and get that thing fastened to the wall so it doesn't tip over when you go to pull it down. Now that the bulk of the project's done, it's time to fill in the gaps around it. So I started here with the base, make sure that's level because everything else is relying on it. But I'm gonna do some cabinets at the bottom, some open shelving above that, and then above the bed, I'm gonna do two more small cabinets. So give us plenty of extra storage for the office space. Once I got all the cabinetry set up, then it was just hiding all of my exposed plywood edges. So I use mostly one by twos, and then for some of the spots, I used some one by fours. It's all getting painted, so it didn't matter. I just bought whatever was cheapest and whatever dimension I needed. If you plan to do a similar setup to what I'm doing here, when you install that base, make sure you don't fasten it to the bed portion because that's not stationary. These are just faux cabinet doors to make it blend in with the rest of the cabinets so it doesn't look like a bed's hiding behind there. This is me putting together the actual cabinet doors that are the exact same dimensions as the faux ones that are on the base of the bed. Next up was my least favorite part, filling on all those nail holes, caulking, sanding, just doing all the paint prep. It's all the stuff that matters in the end. This is what you end up seeing. So do the work here and it'll pay off in the end. I did run into one dilemma. Since my faux cabinet doors are on the face of that bed, I can't get to the back side to install the, the hardware. So I had to use this jig. That way I could get all of my hardware on the same spot. I pre-drilled all my holes and then I had to pull off each of my one by threes and put the hardware on there. Luckily I didn't put a bunch of nails in them yet. So I got them all peeled off, got the hardware on there, and then I added some glue because I don't want them to ever come loose because these are the handles to pull the bed out. And then fully committed, nailed them back up there and got them caulked in. And then it was on to painting. I did have some lessons learned here. I started out trying to use a shield. That was a no-go, especially when you're coming into three-way corners. 
it's just too hard to use a shield. So I went and bought some of this masking film, game changer. If you're doing a project like this where you're having three-way corners, you definitely need some of this masking film. It helps out a ton. Number two, priming went okay, but when it came to painting with this actual cabinet paint, I was having so many runs. I should have done multiple light coats. Instead, I did a one thick coat and I was having runs all over the place. So having to sand it down and repaint it is way worse than just doing multiple light coats until you get the finish that you want. That masking film made cleanup super easy. Then I just had to pull the tape off the handles and get my concealed hinges added to the cabinet doors. Go get you a nice little jig like this Craig jig. Makes life a lot easier when you're adding some concealed hinges. And just like that, another project done. And for once in my life, I don't know what my next project is. So if you have any suggestions for projects, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Now get out of here. I don't know what you're still doing here.